This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, a little late going on tonight, but we decided to do a ramble anyway. What the hell? Why not? Yeah, and here we are. Yes, we are here, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so very much for joining us this evening. We appreciate it. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm I, going on a little uh, late tonight because of... Uh, some legal hassles that I had to deal with and I had to write letters and do things like that and then I finished them all and then I said well no need not to do a show and well <clears throat> plus my throat is trash tonight I have no idea what that's about but anyway so that's it okay all right let me see here there are people waiting to come on here uh, and <clears throat> man I need, I know what I need. I need this, okay? I need a little of this. Ah, mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, anyway. So, here we go. Let me, let me, uh, let me just, um, let's see here. What do I do? Oh, I want to go to Zoom, and I want to bring these people in who are waiting to talk right now. And I don't know who they are. Let me see who they are. Oh, here they are. Okay, there are two of them. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll just see if we get any more people tonight than these, this three. Uh, thank you for being there, you know, all things considered. Um, How to help you get your legal issues. No, I tell you, it, it never stops. It never <laughs> stops. Um, the latest thing that we had happen here uh, was uh, when we when we made the deal to get this apartment, we had to pay off the guy who leased us the apartment initially. All right, right. and um, so we owed him seventy five thousand dollars. So we sent him a check for seventy thousand eight hundred dollars. Now, why would we do that? Mm -hmm. Maybe because he had our security deposit, all right? And he never offered to give it back, so we just figured what we do is pay him minus the security deposit. Security deposit plus, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, um, I'm trying to figure out the numbers again. Uh, 20,800 equals what? $75,000. That's sure. money that we paid him, okay? And it, so now all of a sudden he decides to file a suit against us for the $4,200. Really? What an really? Yeah, what an asshole. Absolutely. Complete and utter asshole. He, got, mean, every, I, he got every penny that was owed him. And he never ever said, hey, I'm going to send you your security deposit, which he should have done. Or at least said to deduct it. Yes, yes, because that's I mean, money. I'm a, I'm a property owner. I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, that, that's. Why should bullshit. I pay him another forty-two hundred? I didn't make a deal for seventy-nine thousand. You know, right. whatever. Well. Okay, so I had to write a letter and do stuff like that to my lawyer, and you know, of course, I got to pay my lawyer money again, and this, you know, I'm I'm just so tired of this. That and the landlord. I mean, all these people. Why don't they? become decent human beings okay instead and find them over for a party open the window and yeah, put and a it, sign huh it, it, if you put a sign out the window jump yeah either that or uh egress so i got two emails to two text messages a little while ago this uh, the ramble's not on and then, then i look at you youtube it says eight o'clock eastern i i understand why now and then on on it's a seven thirty mm -hmm. on on the Gabnet. I'm like, boy, that was confusing. I mean, I I could have just gone on at eight o'clock, like it, you know, 
all these people that want to intervene and got it wrong. Well, and I, I said I wasn't going to do a show tonight, and then I changed it and said we were going to do one at 11 o'clock. But I wanted to get all that other stuff out of the way. I didn't want to do a show all bothered by this, you know? No, no. Mm -hmm. Why should you? So anyway, yeah. How's my mic sounding? Good? Good. Yeah. Everything looks good. Terrific. <laughs> I mean, we can even see Jeff and hear Jeff tonight. Yes, absolutely. I'm working good. So who were the people that wrote you? Uh, Brian Reynolds. He's a... Uh, Guy that comes on Jack's show once in a while, lives here in the Bay Area, and listens to this show, and they said he should start coming on it. He's a, an interesting retired guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody else wrote me. I don't know who. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Now you're all frozen up. Uh, <clears throat> oh, there you go. There you go. One of my uh, fr friend's best friend was shot today in the line of duty in San Jose. <laughs> Is he okay? Uh, is she okay? First officer in San Jose history to be shot. Uh, she's in critical condition. Now, this is not my friend that was shot. This is my friend's friend. And they're both San Jose cops. So what, what, both, what, both what, were the, what were the circumstances? Do you know? Domestic disturbance at a house. Guy that was a convicted felon had a gun and uh, shot through the door when the female officer knocked on the door this morning. That's terrible. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But, you know. I guess that Mr. Vest, Vest, mm. can't mm. speak today. Well, let's keep out a good thought for her. Thank you. Thank you know? You. I mean, so. it, 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 it's, it's that kind of thing when it happens to policemen that it truly bothers me. Because these domestic disturbances, I think you know as a cop, are some of the most dangerous situations you can go into. That and traffic stops are more <laughs> cops are killed in traffic stops and domestic disturbances. Yeah, it was that way in 1980 when I started in law enforcement. And it's still that way. Wow, that's terrible. <laughs> that's horrible. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, cops cops put their life on the line every day for perfect strangers. So, it's kind of what yeah. You do. I wonder if anybody else is going to call. I guess maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Give them a couple minutes. Yeah. I think Some better. people don't check to even see if we're on till after the interview. So, you know, I couldn't <laughs> quite. I couldn't quite understand if you were on or not on. Well, I Charlie tried to call earlier, but now he's not trying. Mm. Uh, so, Charlie, I, well, he, I will send him a text right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, uh, I'm I'm just so sick and tired of paying this lawyer. You know. I just wish it would end, and and it it doesn't, you know. Uh, and uh, I, it's just I, you know, I'm I have enough problems in my life. I mean, my neuropathy is giving me a bad time, and you know, it's things like that, you know. Uh, and I just wanna, I just want life to be good and to spend my senior years in relative. Uh, decency you know yeah i'm just tired of it um but yeah. anyway well i know you're having uh problems with your lawyer but i'm not I had having a... troubles with the lawyer i'm having troubles with the people my lawyer has to deal with oh you know? well i had to deal with my lawyer today and i had to give her six dollars and 20 cents or something like that why Mardass's wife is who he's talking about. My wife. Oh, your wife. Oh, yeah, she is a lawyer. Yeah, damn, I forgot. Yeah. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hey, doing good. How are you? Good. I'm okay. I've been better. You know. <laughs> um, You're uh, on uh, YouTube. Is this you showing? Huh? I know we should uh, be on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, no. It's just you. Just you. Oh, this is me. That's what that Why, means. When, yeah. Why this guy you? Brian says I can only see Alex's face, not you. Yeah. Oh, I you're the only see, one that's on. Okay, you know I do this occasionally because I'm an idiot and a moron. There they are, <laughs> folks. See. Oh boy. You see when I when I don't do it exactly like I'm supposed to do it, like I went on later tonight, I didn't play mm -hmm. any promos or anything like that. I I that's when I screw yes. up like that hello hello everybody there they are see them they're they're all here 
okay? But you got more coming. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, well, I don't look gorgeous enough just to be all by myself on here, you know? Charlie should be coming soon. Yeah. We, we um, but anyway, um, I'll tell you, yesterday we went to the movies, okay? We've been to the movies very seldom in the last, oh, well, since COVID, obviously, but anyway, so we, um, we went to the movies yesterday, and we went to go see Oppenheimer in IMAX, at the big IMAX, AMC IMAX theater. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened during COVID, but you know, they had a perfect opportunity to remodel their theaters really? at that point, but they didn't. Nope, they didn't do it here either. Uh, this was one of, the, one of the worst, I mean, it's a great picture. It's a good movie, it's a very good movie. Bit long three hours and seven minutes long. To me, an hour and a half is just about fine. <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a long movie. I, I don't like IMAX. Can I say that right now? I find IMAX is anti-movie, all right? You're sitting there and there's this just huge screen in front of you. And I, I don't like to sit in the front row of a movie theater. But I was all the way in the back, and I felt like I was sitting in the front row. <laughs> Did you feel a little dizziness going on? No, not watching? really. But it just, it, I, it, IMAX, I just don't like it. I just don't think it's that good. I don't think it's that important a process. I mean, years ago, there was a thing, big screen process, called Cinerama. And Cinerama at least worked on your peripheral vision and you felt like you were on a roller coaster and so on. It was more of a thrill ride than it was anything else. Uh, but this doesn't even serve that function. This is just an enormous, enormous screen. And then I expected that because he wanted to do the movie all on IMAX, that the resolution would be just perfect and wonderful. And it's not. It's grainy. You know? But anyway, forget about that part of it. I mean, it's a good movie. You should go see it. But I'd say go see it in a non-IMAX theater where you can watch it and feel comfortable and not have to just have this thing just all over you. Unless you like to sit in the front row. In which case, go to the IMAX. But uh, what, what I found was disgusting was the theater. I mean, it was filthy. Now, this is your IMAX theater. You would really? think they would keep that one up and make it look beautiful and make it look special because people are paying an extra price for going to a film there. Yeah. It, it was terrible. The seats were horrible. The seats were just disgusting. How much more did they charge uh, compared to a regular I theater? have no idea. Marjorie bought the tickets, but I would say... Probably, I, I would say a ticket to that is 12 bucks at least, if not more. That's what I paid. For, really? What, for IMAX? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like 20 yeah. around here. Well, yeah. anyway, the point is <clears throat> that the theater, it was just a filthy theater, <clears throat> you know? And uh, on top of that, um, at, this, at the IMAX theater, you know, it's a wider thing of seats. In other words, the, the mm. seats are wider. And there's, of course, the aisle on either side. But if you're in the middle, and we were sitting in the middle, and you had to get to the end. It, it took you half an hour. It takes you a half an hour. And let's say in the middle of the movie, you have to take a god-awful pee. You're now stumbling over people who are not appreciating you stumbling over them. And I stumble very easily because of my neuropathy. So, I mean, as a movie-going experience, it was horrid. The film, terrific. I'm, I'm just glad I got to sit there for the three mm. hours and watch a pretty damn good movie that didn't disappoint me. You know, uh, it I wasn't... it was a, a great movie. Uh, well, it wasn't, I don't think, as good as people would like to act that it is. 
It's a good movie, but it's not the best movie of the year. I can't tell you right now offhand what the best movie of the year is, but it's not the best movie of the year. Best movie of the year, quite possibly, I haven't seen it. It could be Barbie. I don't know, you know. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's a very good movie. However, the story has been done before as a movie. Uh, it was a film called uh, uh, Fat Boy and Little Man, starring Paul Newman and uh, a whole bunch of other people. I can't remember now. And it was the whole story about that same thing, about Oppenheimer and about building the bomb and so on and so forth. The only thing is, the last third of this movie really has to deal with the aftermath and the fact that they tried to take his credentials away from him and so on. Yeah. That really wasn't a big part of, of uh, this other movie with Paul Newman playing the general. Uh, but it's pretty much the same movie. Really? Yeah, pretty much the same movie. If you go on, if you have a place like, I don't know, maybe Netflix runs it or something, and you can see that they're playing Fat, uh, fat Man and Little Boy, which are the name of the two bombs. Uh, go see it. I mean, it, 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 you're, you're going to see Oppenheimer is what you're going to see. So, well, you can. There, there's a documentary on YouTube uh, called The Manhattan Project, and it's pretty good. Yeah, this doesn't deal that much with The Manhattan Project. Because Oppenheimer, while I think he was involved with the Manhattan Project, because of course oh, yeah. he had to tell them what he wanted, because they were they were getting together the uh, fissionable material. Um, they didn't um, um, they didn't really get into that that much. He, he this was, was about lead. this was about Los Alamos. What? Yeah, he he was the lead project manager to build this, these bombs. Oppenheimer was yeah, but there's interviews with some of the other very famous physicists and how and how all this came to be. And, and apparently, right before they uh, were going to drop the bombs, the president of the United States died unexpectedly, and the vice president had to be briefed on this whole thing. Well, no, it, it, uh, Truman was alive for quite a while. I was president for quite a while before they dropped the bomb. It wasn't like that fast. But what happened was... They, no, but, but they, who, they, who they died wanted right it, before Truman? Huh? Who died right before Truman? FDR. Yeah, but FDR died before they dropped the bomb. Yes, but you were acting like it was just before they were about to drop the bomb. No, 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 he, but he was, Truman wasn't up to speed, didn't even know this top secret stuff was going on. Well, I'm to sure be. he was told the day Truman, but FDR died. I'm okay. Sure. And um, he um, uh, he was meeting in Potsdam, I think it was, with, uh, with Stalin and with Churchill, and they were going to test the uh, the bomb out yep. there in where was it? New Mexico. In New Mexico somewhere, uh, and uh, where the Trinity was go bomb was going off. And uh, they wanted to do it while he was in Potsdam so he could then say to Stalin, guess what? <laughs> you know, it's Churchill, guess what? Guess what we have? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I heard that he actually told them, and Stalin's reaction was like he already knew that it was in progress. Well, because there was a spy in the, in yep. the project yep. who was Absolutely. informing the Russians. Yep. So they knew it was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the Russians always knew what we were doing, right? Yeah, you know. well, I think all the physicists were always trying to find out what was going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, a lot of them, a lot of them escaped way. Hitler. They were they were yeah. Jewish, and they left uh, yeah. when Hitler first took power and came to the United States, and so we tapped them. I mean. Uh, well, you know, a lot of them did. I, I, Einstein, of course, was Jewish. And Einstein, le yeah, left. but Einstein, Teller, Fermi, Fermi, I think, was Italian, but... Uh, yeah, he doesn't sound Jewish to me. No, not to me either, but they had, they had a bunch of other... And they interviewed some of them on this on this uh, 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 documentary on the Manhattan Project on YouTube. It's a good thing. It's about 45 minutes long. Yeah, but uh, 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 Teller is a questionable character. He, he, well, he was fighting for hydrogen. 
and mm -hmm. uh, he, they, didn't they didn't go along with him. They said, we don't need to go that, that ballistic, as it were, you know. Yeah, but uh, it, it's a, it's a very good movie, and I I I, I, I would just say you could, you could wait for it to play on TV. There's nothing in this movie that you go, oh, I got to see it on that big screen, boy. You know, it, 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 weren't they promoting the fact that it was just how many miles of film or whatever it was that they're oh, it, eleven in? miles of film they're unspooling wow. as the movie is going. Uh, is oh, oh, here's the other thing at the theater. This is really you'll love this. There are parts of the movie that are black and white. And so the screen kind of shows up differently than it would show up elsewhere in the film because with color, you've got a lot of different things all in the picture. With black and white, you've got like walls that are just white, you know. Turns out there were bugs on the screen and moths and things like that. And whenever it would go to black and white, I'd go, there's another moth. There's another whatever. This is I, in the theater you were in. In the theater. Now I would think that IMAX, with all their technology, would say, you know what we should really do in these theaters because bugs might come in and land on the screen. We should just run some air constantly onto the screen to keep sure. things from going on there. Or maybe keeping dust from falling on it. You know. But no you want for twelve dollars. Hey, they you know they, they, they're, they're very technologically proficient. They just don't know how to build a fan. That's all, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, but I, I, uh, I felt that, uh, you know, again, as I say, it's a very good film, but I think you could wait for it to come to uh, your home. I think the three and a hour and seven minute film probably is better watched at home where you can, you know, take a pee without having to stumble over people and, Go, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me. You know. It'll just be Marjorie. Just Marjorie, right. <laughs> so, um, you know. <clears throat> but anyway. So. so are there a lot of people going to movies now? Well, this place was packed. This place was, there wasn't a seat available. Okay. <laughs> uh, and this was an afternoon showing. Uh, so this, this film is making money for the theaters, as is Barbie. I mean, Barbie just had a billion dollars worldwide. I uh, get it. Well, I get it. I get it. I get it that they made a movie that your first reaction is going to be, what do I need with a Barbie movie? And then all of a sudden the reviews come out and say, this is something other than what you expect it to be. And so it then starts playing to a more intelligent audience who then wants to go see it. And that's where they went over the top. If it was just you know, kids, little girls or whatever, oh. you know. But this is appealing to an, a really adult audience. They say the picture is not really a kid's picture. Interesting. But, you know. It's but, been an interesting week for me. For, where did that come from? It just came out, this, out of nowhere. What? Yeah, sorry. I just, I, I only have one show to do now. What do you mean you only have one show to do now? Your show. Now, you're having trouble getting in the, on the Jack show? I'm not having trouble. I sent you what he sent me. You think I ought to go ahead and just try and log back on tonight? All I know is I went and I just off, when we, nothing was on. I turned on the, you know, the Skype, okay? And then from another machine of mine, I called the Skype. And it was fine. Yeah, I, he just doesn't have many people this week so anyhow i, but, I thought but, but, after, i mean what, what i thought after the show i would see if he'll admit me if he'll admit you yeah what what do you mean admit I, you? well I, I sent you a text he chewed me out in a text and <laughs> totally totally uncalled for so we chewed oh he chewed you out i didn't know that yeah yeah i sent you the text and i said you don't really need to do anything but I, you know, I think you ought to know what was said. So some of the other people on the show were like, you know, I don't know if I want to go back, if he's going to treat you that way. And I said, I go back. Don't worry about what's going on with me. And he had, you know, Monday night, I guess he had a one person for a while. And then another person came on. And last night, only Wayne was on for a while. And then uh, Diana came on and he 
doesn't have anybody coming. And I, but what, I'm, he's I'm, blocked you from calling the show? Yeah, he told me that uh, he never wants to have me on the show again. And as okay. far as I'm, as far as he's concerned, I don't exist. See, I think that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and if you're listening, Jack, I find it wrong. And here's why I find it wrong. I had a, I've had a guy on this show over the years who everybody has, many, a lot of people have begged me to not have on. And that's Phil. I never bowed to that kind of pressure. Because my attitude yeah. was, if I'm opening the, the, the thing to callers, all right, yeah. then I am going to take them. Whether I like what they have to say or not, and unless you did something that was just horrible to him, you I know, you yeah. were insulting or something horrible like Nothing. that. But, 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 you know, yeah, well, you know last barring, Friday, what happened is last Friday, he uh, Skype had an update, I guess, right when I got to go on, and it wouldn't let me on. And um, Charlie and Wayne were on, and I tried everything I could. I even uninstalled Skype, reinstalled it, reboot my computer. And it wouldn't let me on. But listening to the show later on, Jack saw me come in, but would have, I, I'd sent you a message that he thought he had to stop the show and restart it. And you said, no, he didn't. And so, and then he sent me a message after the show. Why don't you let everybody know to, to uh, update Skype? Well, you know, it's Microsoft. They're going to update. To begin when with, on. it has nothing to do with updating Skype. Of course not. Skype will keep working even if uh, you're still, oh, I don't know, ten iterations back. Right, right. Well, but he doesn't know that, and you know, and I know that Skype will update automatically. It's a Microsoft thing, and so after I but said no, say, I'm not going to contact say, everybody. Let's say you don't upgrade it; it will it still work. work. Of course, it will. You know, I mean, maybe later on, in three years from now, four years from now, it won't, but not mm -hmm. now. Right, but, you know, so I said, no, I'm not going to send that message out because I, I said, you know, Skype will update on its own. You don't need to do that. Well, he said to me, he said uh, something blah, blah, blah about, about text messages and then said, uh, you, you're, I'll never, you're never, you're not allowed to come back on the show. I deleted the text. You're not allowed to come back what on the show. What did you do? What did you do? That was it. Nothing. I just refused to call these people to tell them to update. That was the whole thing in a text. Nobody has to update in order to get on. I, I know, I, and, but he didn't, obviously. I and mean, he can... He, he, if the, he end of his, the end of his text said, as far as I'm concerned, you don't exist. Oh, really? And he told me not to, not to ever call back in again, so... Well, and you've been very loyal to him. Yep. You yeah. know. And some of the other people on the show that, you know, he said you can tell whoever you want. So I told the people that were on the show that I'm in contact with, and all of them said, this is this is no way you treat somebody that's been loyal like you. Well, also, I mean, it, it, I, just because you don't like somebody is not the reason you don't put them on. If you're doing a show and you're saying, I'm taking on all callers, you take on all callers, you know. Well, Call me right exactly. now. Call, call us. You know, we need callers for our show. Give us a call. Well, then if Alan calls, you take Alan's call. Maybe you don't like Alan. Maybe you hate Alan. There are several people who have called this program over the years that I haven't really liked that much, like like Jeff. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> you, you know, but I I will, will constantly... Uh, Defend their right to be on the show. Yeah, I know. I, I think he went overboard, and I, I, he hasn't wrote back. I, I said, why don't you write back and apologize or something? No, he doesn't read text messages or anything. Very oh, he, often. I, I, he, I sent him a text tonight saying I wasn't doing a show tonight, and I'm sh I didn't write him to say I decided to finally do one because he probably he never reads his texts. No, you know, no. there's no way for so, me to get so, a hold of him. Yeah, so Phil told me today, just try and log back onto the show tonight after your show, and see if he accepts me. And well, he may have actually out. blocked you because you can do that with Skype. No, well, he might have. Yeah. You know, Amy. Amy tried to get in Friday night too, and she couldn't get in either. And you know, although I called Amy, and Amy said, 
she's been in bed all day long with some kind of illness and she didn't call but if you listen to Jack if you listen to Jack's show after he after the show was over with on Gabnet it says oh look Jack says oh look Amy's trying to call in but it says they got to put everybody on hold and I'm not going to do that well, I don't know what's his, what his problem is because Skype is almost as easy to use as Zoom, okay? Uh -huh. um, and I don't know what his problem is. I don't know. I'll try and call back in tonight. Yeah. All I know is I tried it just to make sure that everything was working yeah. on, on Zoom, and it was. You know? yeah. Why doesn't he use, how come he doesn't use Zoom? Well, that is partially me. Okay. Jack is not what we call technologically savvy. <laughs> and to have him go to Zoom would change the entire th nature of how he takes calls, so on and so forth. Oh, and so he wouldn't it, be used to having all it this. It would be another learning process. Yeah. Skype is something we've used continually. You know, it doesn't cost any more to use, you don't pay to use it. Uh, with Zoom, he'd have to pay, you know, a yearly rate of about $150 a year to do it. Uh, so I, I, rather than, uh, you know, I've had enough headaches getting him up to speed to where I don't get these calls after every show going, oh, I can't get this to work and I can't get that to work. I've gotten that all taken care of. I don't want to start a whole bunch of new ones by having him do Zoom. One of your, one of your listeners that gets on the show periodically, Ray, and he gets on Jack's show, and I guess he's listening to the show. He says, I just heard about Jack. That really sucks. Sorry it happened to you. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what I'm getting from everybody. Well, it shouldn't, it, of all people, for it to happen to. It shouldn't happen right. to you. I mean, I'm I, I'm rough around the edges. I get that. But, you know, all you got to do is, like, when you do it, when, you, when you've had enough of me or Phil, you tell me, shut the F up. And yeah. we, and we well, move there, on. There are times you're a pain in the ass. Absolutely. Know. There are times, I live to be a pain in the ass. So. There, are times, there are times when pain, Phil, more often than not, has been a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, well, but, that's okay. But, you know, I, on the other hand, I know that Phil respects me enough that if I tell him, back off, pal, he will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you say the same, you said the same thing to me once. You yeah. said, you got to cool it. And I said, okay. Yeah. yeah. You didn't say, you can't come on the show, you're blocked. You're nobody to me, which is what Jack's message said. So, yeah, well, that's yeah, not the, right. The last line in Jack's text says, uh, "As far as I'm concerned, you're nobody to me." So I might, okay. Well, he's using the show as a weapon, and I don't think he should do that. Yeah, well, you, you know, that's not right. I I didn't really want at you my to get worst. That. I never do that. You know, right. there have been people that I have banned from the show or kept off the show. One yep. was, what's his name? Mike was his name. Uh, the guy who had the cancerous laugh. You know, we think he's dead now. Is that Mike? Uh, Mike Allen, yeah. Mike Allen. Uh, I I didn't want to have him on. He was just too, yep. he just had nothing to say and was terribly disruptive. And he was he's the same way when he was on Jack's show. But, you know. Um, yeah, but, but what I did is I, what I, what happened was he then started calling Jack. So I gave Jack a, a caller that was all his own, you know, and yeah. he, he, he took the handle. If he couldn't handle Mike, if he could handle Mike, he certainly could handle you. Well, yeah, but Mike and I would go round and round and, and, and Jack encouraged it. And even Mike and I would talk on the phone afterwards and. He would say, you know, don't talk about my health. Other than that, you can give me a hard time about anything you want. And it's entertaining. What That's happened okay. to him? Is he is he dead, do you think? You know, I, I yeah, we, we don't really know. What happened is he lives in Sacramento, California, or lived in Sacramento. We don't know what. Uh, I had his address because I sent him a gift, you know, uh, uh, Amazon Prime. But anyhow, so um, a couple months ago, I went up there a month and a half ago. I went up to visit a friend, and it happened to be two blocks away from her, three blocks away from where he lived. So mm -hmm. I drove by there and knocked on the door. Didn't look like anything was going on. The lawn was high, but you know, and uh, you know, I knocked on the window. I didn't, didn't see any problems. And so I walked to the, both neighbors, one was home, one wasn't across the street. Some uh, lady came out, an older lady and said, 
are you looking for Mike? And I said, yes, ma'am, I sure am. And, well, he left in an ambulance like a month ago, and we haven't seen him since, so I assume he's dead. And I said, oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And she says, he, he was a creepy guy. <laughs> and I said, well, he's, he... He had his own way. We were we were together on a Zoom thing, and she says, "Oh, okay." And I said, "But uh, you know, he was all right." And she said, "Have you gone in the backyard or anything?" And I said, "Well, I don't have any legal authority to go in the backyard." And you know, and she said, "Well, you know, uh, maybe he's in the backyard." So I, I said, "Well, you saw him leave and didn't see him come back." She's the the lady that sits in front of her window and watches TV all day long. I assume. So I, 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 she says, you seem to know a lot about trying to find people. And so I showed her my retirement ID and when, you know, and she says, oh, there's a cop coming down the street. And so I walked out in the street, asked him, you know, put my hand out, cop stop. And he said, we can't do anything. You can't do a welfare check on somebody two months. I said, okay, well, I'm just wondering. He says, this isn't my beat anyhow. I'm just driving through to get coffee. Yeah. So I said, I said, okay. And he says, why don't you jump the fence? I said, because I, I don't know what's back there. And I said, and at my weight, my size, I'll never get back over the fence. <laughs> you know, so we, so I, I have no idea. I mean, I, I can I didn't go over the fence. I didn't go the gate. Yeah. The arch. But anyway, all I, I'm saying. I've watched is... people kick in doors that were unlocked. And so what I didn't do is after I left, I thought, well, I should have pulled the, the, the string on the gate to see if it was open and walked back there, but you know. Anyhow. I think I think probably he's dead. You know? Probably, he was he was uh, the last couple of weeks when I was on Jack's show. He claimed he had double pneumonia, but he could barely talk, could barely catch his breath, and uh, he was a smoker. Heavy three packs a day. They, you know, when I first came on the show, they had spotted some spots on his lungs. And he wouldn't talk about it. And six months later, he says, "Oh, my doctor finally got around to me, and there's nothing. There was nothing wrong with me. Uh, it's just some spots on my lungs." Well, you know, yeah. when you're a regular cigarette smoker your whole life, three packs a day, um, there's a good chance. Nice color Porsche. There's a good. There's a good chance. There's a bug on it though. Uh, but anyhow, there's a chance that it's probably cancer. And I don't think he wanted to do anything about it. Is that a Porsche? Yeah. Isn't right. it? About uh, eight fifty. Really? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. No, you. Is it a Porsche? Yeah. No, no, it's a Fiat. It's yeah. a car oh, I, I had when I was in high school. Oh, we didn't hear you. Yeah, at first. I mean, this is not a wow. guy. This is not a Something's guy. Who, with my mic. This is not a guy who would waste his money on a Porsche. You know. <laughs> oh. Ah, raise it, raise it, good guy. Thank you for your kind words, Bray, about uh, what Jack did to me. You're you're not coming through, Ray. We don't hear you. And his head disappears every now and then too. And yeah, he's got it does. A green screen, obviously. So. Well, I know. I, I always hate the non-green screen version of green screening. <laughs> the one because, that's built into it, the because software. Because look what happens, oh. folks. Look what happens. You just lose everything. The software version. Yeah. And his head. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Huh? We so, get to look. So, Steve, head. how you doing? I'm doing good. Things yeah. are doing well. Yeah, no complaints. Uh, I was—I meant to ask you, um, what did you think of the final product of your sweepers? Oh, very nice, very nice. Oh, good. I'm glad I could do them for you. They're on. I'm the voice of Steve Fox. <laughs> oh, no, really? Yeah. Oh, He's that's a, He's the voice of Gabnet. You're the voice of. So, is this on KQED, Steve? No, no, no. This is on uh, Steve Fox's old school. Oh, okay. Which so is, he's on the top of the hour. Oh, do you just go to Steve Fox's old school? Is that where you go? Yeah, it, it's it's all, all it's streaming everywhere. But um, you know, wherever you want to go ahead and stream it from. And what are you doing? Playing music? Yeah, it's a, a classic R and B station from the '60s to the '90s. How do you pay for the music rights? Oh boy, that's a good question. <laughs> You uh, go. I was going through um, Live three sixty five before, mm -hmm. and there's also a few other areas that you can you pay per month. Um, but so far, you know, it's been on for about ten years now. Oh, really? So yeah. Oh, and, you and just it's pretty got... popular, so it's doing good. Really? Oh, okay. 
Hey, can you hear me now? In. Yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, okay, I think my um, my my channel on my uh, I have the same board as you, Alex. I think the first channel is not working right. I probably yeah. have to clean it. Get rid I of, never have that problem, Ray, get, and I get, don't have get a Get rid board. of your background because it's really screwing up. with. The, oh, I'm uh, sorry. No, yeah. Basically because it, uh, <clears throat> it chops off so part funny. of your head. Oh, oh, okay. Let me... Yeah, there we go. That's nice. That just looks fine. Uh, How about that? Well, yeah. that's fine, you know. I'll just do that. That's That's fine. nice. That's actually there we go. very nice, actually. A blur. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, so, my, my so life, what, it's a blur, right? You yeah. heard you heard what I said about uh, thanking you for uh, what you said about what Jack kicking me off the show. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's terrible. Yep. I, I, I'll try, I, and, might, I'll try I, and log on tonight and see if we can move past it. Didn't he do that one other time to somebody and he just kind of forgot about it as if it didn't happen? I think I, I vaguely remember that happening to somebody else. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't, I'm you, pretty you sure. Brought, you brought up Mike Allen on his show, and I never saw Mike Allen on your show, Alex. I came in in early 2020 on your show, so I, Mike was gone already. Well, mm -hmm. Mike Allen was associated with somebody else who had a show on the Internet who was kind of an asshole. He gets on, he gets on who's the guy that does the sports channel on GabNet? Oh, uh, that was um, it's uh, franchise MC. Okay, well, he get he he would he would get on. Well, this too. was some other guy. I'm trying to remember his name now. Can't remember his name. Uh, and he would he would call. He was just a kind of a pain in the was ass. Was this the guy that hung himself? Doug? Who's no? N what? Doug? Was it Doug? Oh no, not Doug. Although, oh okay. Although Doug, I I think I. I threw him off on a couple of occasions, you know. When yeah. I think about people I threw off, yeah, Doug was one of them. Well, he was drunk all the time. Yeah, but, but the thing is, I I don't mind people's opinions, for instance, as an example. Uh, I don't mind people's opinions. I do mind when they disrupt the show. Yeah. You know, when they become a disruptive factor. And uh, he, he, you know, he was a disruptive factor. So. Yeah, that was before video. That was when we were just doing sound, yeah. like seven years ago, I think. Are there people who've gotten mad at me and then have uh, uh, take, taken themselves off the show? You know. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. You're so easy going. How can anybody the, get mad? <laughs> the, the, the latest one is Phil. Uh, really? Oh, he'll I be heard back. About that. What? I heard about that, but I understand there was an apology back and forth, and everything's fine. And Mar yeah, Marjorie apologized for what she had said. Right, yeah. and he and he wrote he read he read to me what he wrote yeah, back. Yeah, he wrote back and, a very nice letter. Yeah, I think so too. But he's, that, a, good, that, that, he's a good person. That doesn't he's mean he's going to be on the show, you know. Well, okay. It's up to him, you know. He's yeah. nobody's telling him I, he can. I think he'd like you to tell him that he can. So. Oh no, I have told him. Oh, okay. I don't know the whole story. Anyhow. You know, he's agreed to maybe do the the half hour thing again. You know, but um, I don't know. You know, I'd like him to be part of the show. But you but know, too. I mean, it, you know, the numbers go up because everybody's yelling and screaming at him. It's, no, uh, no, I don't think that he has ever improved my listenership. Oh. In any way, <clears throat> I, I don't think he's heard it, but I don't think he's helped it. Do I sound yeah. hoarse tonight? By the way, no, no, okay, feel hoarse. Anyway, so um, uh, but uh, he's always welcome on the show um, tonight. Uh, we haven't talked about something because this only happened this week, uh, and that is, of course, the whole Trump thing with Georgia. Anybody got any opinions? Uh, well, I, I was just going to say I need some people's addresses because if he gets convicted, I'm sending out French champagne. Oh, okay. All right. Well, well what I think what's great about Georgia is uh, you can't get pardoned by the federal government. Even the Democrats, if they decide to pardon him, can't pardon him. Why would they do that? Uh, because they're all billionaires and they'd probably just pardon him. Oh, you don't well, want no, to have no, any... No, they can't, they can't pardon him because it's a state offense. That's what, that's what I mean. Yeah. 
It's a state offense, so no one can pardon him if he's convicted. Yeah. Well, I, I think the governor of the state might be able oh, to. Oh, that's, that's uh, a good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Kemp, who just got reelected, doesn't like Trump. So, yeah, the governor. Chance in that. Yep, the governor of, of Georgia. So, not much. Chance so, here, uh, let me. Where, oh, gee, wait, here, 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 I've got it over here. Let me. Uh, I get he hasn't been frame. convicted yet. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to get this. Where is it? Okay. I got a list of things here. I, somebody put this up on Twitter, and I kind of thought it was well worth uh, bringing on here tonight. And I put it over on the side where I couldn't get it. Uh, these are the things that are attributed to... Where are my glasses now? There, oh, there's one pair. Oh, there's the other pair. Okay. Anyway, listen to this, folks. Here is how he stands. This is the guy who's running for president. Now, I don't know why people would vote for this, um, but and some of these are things he has been convicted of, okay? Currently, he has 91 criminal charges issued against him. 91. 26 sexual assault allegations, six bankruptcies, five draft deferments, four indictments, two impeachments, one convicted company, one fake university shutdown, one fake charity shutdown, a $25 million fraud settlement, a $5 million sexual abuse verdict, and a $2 million charity abuse judgment, uh, twitter.com. This Matt Gates, who is huh? this? Trump. This is Trump. Oh, Trump, no shit. 91 federal charges. That, those are all the things that are, are oh, wow. oh, 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 either oh, cur currently happening or have happened in the past. Oh, I thought you said he was convicted of all these. No. Oh, sorry. No, he hadn't been convicted of them yet. Well, some of them he has. I mean, uh, the... Um, uh, what is a few of these said? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, the draft deferments are there. Six bankruptcies, or you know, uh, twenty-six sexual assault al allegations. All right, this is a guy you want to have be president, folks. You know, doesn't make sense. Why? Why? Why do you? Why would you want this guy to be president? And what did he do when he was president that was that great? How was your life immeasurably better? Excuse me, I'm talking to the average listener out there, not the billionaires who listen to us. You know. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is listening. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was great for Mark Zuckerberg, right? <laughs> but, you know, I mean... Um, this is a, a guy now who has four cases against him now, you know, and how many indictments in those in those cases? Um, I heard there was ninety-one indictments in those yeah, cases. Yeah, yeah, ninety-one indictments total between yeah. all of the stuff that's been going on. And I think Michigan is coming soon. Michigan's going to do it. I'm pretty sure. Really. Um. You know, you know what uh, I heard on the news today uh, is something interesting. The Republicans, the MAGA people, Fox News, they just try to say how terrible this is. It's against freedom of speech. They never go like through one by one of all the charges and say why they're wrong. You know, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, OK, but what if they said, OK, seven to these 70 of these, I think, are bogus. But yeah, 20 of them. Yeah, there's something to it. <laughs> I mean, they're never going to do that. Well, where there's you know? smoke, there's fire. Exactly. You know, and yeah, um, it's just that. Do you want a person of this questionable morality to be president of the United States? Some I don't think do. he. I don't understand. Is this really the kind know. of person that we do it? You know, now we can't prevent him from running because he hasn't been convicted of anything. No. Uh, but well. Even the convictions won't stop him from running. Well, the I heard he could run for president from jail. Oh yes, that he can mm -hmm. do. Yeah. yeah. He can be president in jail. 
There's still some <laughs> question as to whether he can. But once he's convicted, he can't vote. Yeah. But can, the question it always uh, gets there, and we don't have an answer to it. I don't think he has a chance in hell of winning the general election. I think there's too much against him. Oh, God, there's got to be. I mean, there's got to be. No independent will vote for him. Yeah. And, and there are probably a hell of a lot of Republicans now who won't vote for him. You know, those moderate Republicans who you never hear from. Mm-hmm. I don't think he has a chance. The only way he's going to win is if he and his cronies actually rig the election, which I'm sure they're really trying to figure out how to do right now. Well, they tried to do it in Georgia. That's what exactly. Georgia's claiming. I mean, you got to realize, as opposed to the other charges, uh, to begin with, it is a state, and so therefore the government cannot pardon him. Okay. But secondly... This is a RICO case. Yeah. This is this is organized crime. Crime. Okay. They are being accused of organized crime. That's his special job. Yeah. Yeah. And and Georgia's uh, RICO laws are are more liberal than other states. They they can use them against non mobsters. You know, most places. Well, a lot they of were places, originally they were originally created uh, to go against mobsters, but. That it's not the only people that have been charged with RICO. Right. But I, I heard that George has done this before, you know, against non-mobsters, whenever there's a conspiracy. Listen, can you crime. think of bigger mobsters than, say, uh, Rudy Giuliani? No. See, they're, they're huge mobsters. Huge mobsters. Yeah. 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 I mean, they're, the, they're bigger than mobsters because not only do they commit crimes, but they also hold the rein, held the reins of government. Yeah. You know what and, they say. And, you know what they say about Giuliani, is that he's broke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they don't know how he's going to defend himself. It'd be funny if he had to go get like a, you know, what do you call those? Guys? Well, he's on that website where you know you can pay him like a hundred bucks and he'll sing happy birthday to your wife and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah. That's what he's he's doing. Really? That. Yeah. Yeah. That it's an app. That's how desperate the guy is. Oh my gosh. But is he going to have to get like free counsel or whatever for this? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's terrible. It's terrible, it's crazy. Uh, and it's crazy. And you know, it's the same thing. Trump says the same thing every time. This is a witch hunt. <laughs> it's getting laughable. Yeah. Well, because he does, he should change what he says yeah, each yeah. time. You know. Um. You know, this is McCarthyism all over again. He should do something like that, you know, try and, you know, but he doesn't. And it's it's terrible. I mean, it's just terrible. And it's terrible that people are sending him money. Mm-hmm. His pack is, be, one third of his pack has gone to lawyers so far. You know, so all you people who send him money, it's not going for him to ride, run ads on TV. It's going for him to try and pay his lawyers. And it's probably people who can't afford to give him any money that are giving him money. Well, that's the sad part about it, too. You know? And I would imagine if we looked into the, uh, the, the giving part of this, we could probably find more things to arrest him on. You know? I mean, is that mo- I guess he can use the money for anything, can't he? Went yep. On a pack? Yeah. Yeah. So if he wanted to, like, hire hookers, he could hire hookers using PAC money, right? Use it for anything, yep. Oh, boy. Such so, a scam. Yeah. Well, I'm sure uh, Alan is delighted about what happened to Trump. You know. Hell yeah. But it's all come down. You know, it's all come right. down. These are four cases he's got against him. I just hope one of these can... The trial can start well before the election and resolve itself well before the election. They're probably going to do every kind of stalling tactic that they can possibly do. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. then, the, then, then when, when the actual uh, campaign officially starts, they're probably going to have to stall everything because it would be an infraction on someone's ability to campaign for well, president. Well, you know, if I'm a judge, I would say to him, nobody asked you to run for president, you know. This case goes on whether you're running for president or not. It has nothing to do with you running for president. 
You know, it has to Even do. Even if he becomes president, he can't stop the states. Yeah. What do you mean? He can't stop what? The state charges. The, the Georgia pointed that out. Yeah. The DA said, even if he becomes president, we will continue to go after him. He can't stop. He might be able to stop the federal uh, things, but he won't be able to stop the state. Yeah. But, or the state of New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. He's got a lot of legal problems. Oh, I, you know. I wouldn't want that many legal problems. I've only got. I wouldn't want you. You got you got one minor problem compared to him. This, this your your oh, damn it, tenant thing. Oh, it, it, it yeah yeah. It, the thing him. though, Trump's Trump's a sociopath or whatever. So you know, it doesn't really get to him like it would a normal person. Nope, it's true. Yeah, so, the judge so, you know, don't talk. He's gonna live about forever. It. This guy talks about it all the time. I think they ought to nail him a contempt of court and put him, lock him up so he can't talk. Well, he's getting close, apparently. Yeah, I bet. I mean, he, he completely went against what the judge told him not to do in terms of harassing witnesses, and he did it on Truth Social. Yep. Well, And then he, he threatened people on there, too. Well, he yep. has this attitude that he uh, is uh, doesn't have to be called to account for any of this. He believes he's untouchable. And and to a large degree, over the years, he has been. Yeah. You know, yeah. he, he and and I think the only thing that prevented him from winding up in jail was he wound up being president of the United States. Yeah. I'm sure there was a lot of stuff lurking out there, especially here in New York, that they were ready to go after him on. Because come on, he was one of the crookedest uh, uh, real estate people in the city. And God knows, real estate people are crooked in this city. Well, his mentor, uh, Roy Cohn, the mob lawyer, mm -hmm. taught him everything he knows. <laughs> well, one of them was you don't you don't plead uh, guilty, or rather you don't or you don't you don't plea out. Yeah. You know, uh, and you don't uh, you don't ever admit you're wrong. Never yeah, and you repeat wrong. you repeat lies enough, people will believe you. Well, that's Hitler. Hitler figured that one out. Goebbels. Yeah, right. Yeah. Goebbels came up with that. Who do we just lose? Yeah. Um, Jeff. Uh, Jeff's Jeff, Jeff's gone. No, we lost Jeff. Oh well. Anyway, um, yeah. So Goebbels. No, Goebbels came up with the big lie. Yeah. You repeat something enough times, and eventually it becomes truth. You know. So, whatever. Anyway, it looks like we're almost through here. Let me uh, start playing a theme here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Thank you, text. We still can't hear it. Oh. What? What'd you say? I guess we can't hear it. You, you can't hear it. I don't know why. I've never been able to figure out why. It, oh. it, it, some of these things that are on here, if I played them, you can hear them. That's the strange part. So, I don't know what the thing is. I give up. Right. <laughs> it could be just a software thing, you know, a software update that has a no, bug it in it. Has nothing, nothing to do with software. Oh, it has okay. to do with. Well, wait a minute. Let me stop playing that a second, and let me play something else here. Tell me if you can hear this. Now more than ever, it's a breeze to listen to See? all the gadgets. You can hear offer. that, but you can't hear this one. Thing. Um, oh, I hear it a little bit now. A little bit. It's coming through. It's probably coming through a speaker. Yeah, we're hearing this through the speaker. No, it's not coming through the speaker. Well, anyway. Oh well, we're hearing a little like it's muff, super muffled. Well, anyway, we have to we have to get going here to uh, make way for Jack Bishop <laughs> in the intersection without Alan. Uh, and <laughs> Steve, great having you here. Always love having yeah. you here. Same thing with you, Alan. Same thing with you, Ray. And thanks to Jeff who left us. And I know a lot of people would have been here tonight, except I didn't go on till uh, 11. Anyway, everybody, uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There they go. Okay. I'm going to sneeze. So before I sneeze, let me just sign off by saying to you. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Let me just sneeze. All right. Anyway, we'll see you uh, again tomorrow night right here, 1030 at Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, 
tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Good night.